All right, so in this presentation, we're going to talk about the large area synthesis of high quality and uniform graphene films. All right, so what is graphene? Graphene is, um, it's monolayer sp2 carbon atoms. So think of graphite, how you have the sheets of carbon atoms uh, stacked on top of one another with van der Waals forces in between them. Um, you can just think of graphene as just one of those single layers without the other layers um, present. So it's a, um, it's a bendable and transparent. You can see on the image on the right. Um, has very very interesting optical properties as well as um, mechanical properties. I'll get into that in the next couple of slides. So, what's the hype um, surrounding graphene? Why is it why is it so interesting? Why are scientists, researchers, um, engineers why are they all losing their minds about this molecule? Um, well, first off, it has a lot of uh, interesting electronic properties. Um, First, it's a zero-gap semiconductor. Um, taking a look at the image on the bottom right is generally what, how we think about um, metals, semiconductors, and insulators based on their um, energy. So as we can see in the semiconductor case, it has a very small um, band gap energy. The distance between the valence band and the conduction band is uh, very small. In the case of uh, graphene, that uh, band gap energy is actually zero. So they don't overlap like they would in the case of a metal, but they're like, they're just touching, which um, is very, uh, leads to very interesting properties. Um, in the case of graphene, uh, the conduction and valence band, they meet, uh, they meet at the Dirac point, as you can see in the image uh, on the top right. Um, uh, Fermi uh, electrons at this uh, at this Dirac point are known as uh, Dirac fermions, and in the case of graphene, they're actually massless. They have no mass, which uh, this is why this is the main reason why graphene has uh, such interesting electronic uh, applications. Um, it has incredibly high electron mobility. Um, the electron mobility for graphene is actually uh, 10 million times greater. And that of copper so you can think of electrons traveling through a metal like copper uh, incredibly quick it's about 10 million times faster in uh, graphene so that's, that's crazy that's unbelievable um, another um, property of graphene that uh, scientists are kind of freaking out about is its uh, strength uh, it has a uh, high elastic modulus and intrinsic strength are measured at uh, one terapascal and 130 gigapascals, respectively, and these values mean um, that it's it's roughly 325 times the uh, mechanical strength of steel. So if you think of steel is generally like we think of it as a very you know strong um, you know, strong material that's hard hard to break stuff like that. Uh, graphene is 325 times stronger than that. So that's that's crazy. Um, it's the strongest material ever measured in a laboratory setting. Um, so theoretically, we have things made out of graphene. They're going to be incredibly strong, tough to, you know, they'll stretch out a whole lot before they break. So how can we as scientists make use of um, graphene's electronic and mechanical properties? Um, uh, graphene has a wide variety of applications outside of the research lab um, in you know real world technologies. Um, its electronic properties make it a great uh, biosensor. So um, sensors uh, that incorporate graphene with them, they can use that um, high carrier mobility that graphene possesses to um, more accurately and more quickly. Um, sense glucose levels, um, hemoglobin levels, uh, stuff like that is produced by the body. Um, graphene biosensors will do a much better job at keeping track of that stuff. Um, uh, for the case of energy storage, um, batteries that get implement, uh, batteries that implement graphene, um, 
can almost be seen as like a super capacitor. Um, it'll it'll increase the charge rate um, significantly as well as increase the um, amount of time that a single charge would last. So I believe Samsung right now is developing graphene batteries in their new phones. Um, they're they're claiming that. Uh, claiming that their batteries can be charged in about like 15 minutes which is which is crazy compared to today's standards um, another big application on um, optical electronics so you know graphene's um, electronic properties as well as its um, transparency make it a great um, touchscreen uh, you can see through it as well as the um, it can pick up those electric signals that change the change the image so graphene it's a uh, uh, superior to what is currently being used um indian tin oxide um it's superior that the uh, the physical properties are much superior uh less likely to break um as well as it's a lot cheaper to produce uh graphene instead of the indium tin oxide so we'd be seeing um a lot, of, a lot of money saved in both repairing damaged goods as well as production. And uh, finally, for uh, photovoltaic cells or um, solar cells, same kind of deal. Uh, graphene would be able to replace um, current uh, solar cells that use silicon and the uh, ITO uh, materials. So we would see an overall um, decrease in the cost to produce these solar cells as well as um, increased energy efficiency due to that um, carrier mobility. So why don't we see more things um, implementing graphene considering its electronic, uh, mechanic, optical, and cost-effective properties. Um, as of right now, graphene uh, synthesis is kind of limited by the um, area of the film which we can synthesize. Um, currently it's being produced using exfoliation techniques. Uh, essentially, exfoliation techniques um, include just ways that uh, we take like that, that graphite, that multi-layer graphite, and we just strip um, single layer sheets off of it one at a time. Um, and currently, uh, it, that method produces graphene of the best electronic quality. However, uh, it's obvious that there's a, a scaling limit that exists for um, production of graphene using this method. Um, yeah. Uh, so how can we um, how can we fix this? What technique um, can we come up with that is scalable such that we can um, produce larger area um, samples of graphene ones that um, take less time to produce, less um, manpower to produce, uh, essentially ones that meet um, production demands. Um, however, this method uh, needs to be tested for its physical and electronic quality, just like the, the exfoliation technique produces um, graphene of great electronic quality. This new technique also needs to uh, produce a graphene of good electronic quality. So the method that uh, um, the Lee group came up with to uh, synthesize large uh, area graphene samples is chemical vapor deposition, or CVD. Uh, the CVD reaction is performed at 1,000 degrees Celsius under hydrogen gas and methane gas in a low-pressure environment on a copper foil catalyst. So um, step one of this method is uh, they need to heat up the, uh, heat up the system to initiate the pyrolysis of methane. Um, at high temperatures, coupled with hydrogen, methane gas can uh, be just associated in the carbon atoms, and uh, those other hydrogens can uh, couple with the hydrogen gas. Uh, that's also in the system. Um, the second step, uh, they need to form the, uh, the sp2 carbon structure that is, that is graphene. Um, in this case, they use a metal catalyst, uh, the copper foil, uh, and that's used to reduce the temperature of the reaction to around a thousand degrees. So um, 
In this case, it's important that they use copper um, just because other metals have shown um, to produce graphene of kind of quirky properties. So I'll talk about that a little bit later, but just that it's important that the, um, the metal substrate is uh, copper. Uh, step three, once the uh, graphene film is deposited onto the copper substrate, um, the copper layer needs to be uh, removed or separated from the graphene film. So in this case, uh, they use an etching solution of iron nitrate in order to dissolve the copper, and that'll separate it from the, uh, the graphene film. And finally, um, before the graphene is um, before the graphene is like transferred or you know measured using any kind of analytical technique, um, they need to put a polymer coating on it to protect it. Uh, in this case, the re researchers used this uh, polymer called polymethyl methacrylate or PMMA for short, and that just you know, like I said uh, facilitates the transfer. So on this slide is just a quick uh, schematic of the um, chemical vapor deposition reaction. Um, it's experimental parameters uh, measured as a function of time. Um, so from 0 to 60 minutes, the, you can see the temperature is uh, slowly risen up to 1,000 degrees Celsius. Um, under very low pressure, the pressure is only around 40 millitors, so that's really small. Not even close to atmospheric pressure. Um, and hydrogen gas, uh, the flow rate is two standard cubic centimeters per minute. So also very low hydrogen flow rate, just enough that hydrogen's in the reaction vessel uh, to be coupled with the methane. Um, at around uh, the 60 minute mark, uh, we introduce methane gas to the system at a flow rate of around 35 standard cubic centimeters per minute. Um, during this time, hydrogen gas kept flowing, and the, the pressure is also increased to about 500 millitor. Um, it's important at this phase we need to uh, maintain the pressure, uh, maintain the temperature at 1,000 degrees Celsius, such that it provides you know the heat necessary for the reaction to occur. And uh, during the 60 to 90 minute mark, the reaction is carried out for around 30 minutes. Um, that's that's the growth phase uh, where graphene is actually deposited onto the copper foil. Um, Finally, after 90 minutes, um, graphene's done, kind of growing. It's for sure that it's all done. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit later in um, how graphene has a, a property known as supplement growth. But um, after 90 minutes, um, the reaction uh, can be cooled down and taken at off heat. So the uh, resulting graphene film can be studied. So after Lee's group synthesizes large area graphene film using the chemical vapor deposition technique, they needed to analyze um, the properties of the film that they produced just to make sure that it was um, up, to, up to standards with the, the graphene that was already currently being produced by uh, techniques like the uh, exfoliation technique I mentioned earlier. Um, in the next couple slides, I'm going to kind of go over uh, what they found um, during this analysis. Um, mainly that um, the self-limited growth um, of graphene and what kind of mechanism that implies um, of how uh, the graphene is actually formed, as well as the, um, the, un the overall uniformity of the graphene film. Um, generally, you can see uh, around, they found that over 95% of the uh, graphene film produced was actually um, a uniform monolayer, along with uh, you know a couple specks here and there of um, bilayer and trilayer graphene. So the first thing that Lee's group observed is that um, graphene, um, the CBD process produces graphene that is actually uh, self-limited in its growth. So um, taking a look at uh, the figure on the left. Um, that's a scanning electron microscope image of the graphene film, and it was measured at different um, different points of the reaction. So um, uh, the figure A represents the reaction that happened uh, that occurred for one minute, uh, B for two and a half minutes, C for ten minutes, and D for sixty minutes. 
And what I want you to look at is the, the two um, boxes outlined in red, um, C and D, the reaction from 10 minutes to 60 minutes. Um, you can notice that after, after the 10 minutes, um, graphene really um, didn't really grow that much after that. The difference between 10 minutes and 60 minutes is uh, you know, barely anything at all. So what does this mean? That means that um, uh, essentially graphene is self-limited in its growth. It won't, it won't grow anymore due to uh, graphene's properties. Um, they further um, delved kind of into this topic. Um, they took a look at uh, graphene growth at other thicknesses. So um, thinner samples of graphene that they produced, uh, thicker samples of graphene that they produced, um, uh, they found that for the thin samples, the case of the thin samples, um, they didn't observe any discontinuous monolayers, and for the thick samples, um, they didn't observe any continuous uh, multilayers. So everything was kind of just this, this continuous monolayer, um, which is what they were aiming for. So they found that compared to other techniques that um, used other metal catalysts, such as nickel, um, the, the, the reactions that use nickel kind of predicted that uh, graphene formation it occurs through a precipitation mechanism, whereas uh, the researchers in the league group found that graphene actually occurs um, by a, a surface catalyzed mechanism on the copper foil. So the next thing that um, the Lee group wanted to look at is um, the uniformity of the graphene film that they produced. Um, uh, graphene, it's that monolayer, sp2 bonded carbon, so it's important that those monolayers are actually monolayers. Um, if not, it kind of messes with the uh, electronic properties a little bit, uh, the, um, the mechanical properties, stuff like that. So it's important that it's monolayer. Um, so looking at their, uh, their results, um, you can look at figures A and B on the left. Um, figure A shows a scanning electron microscope image of the graphene film that was produced, and B shows an optical microscope image of the graphene produced. Um, generally, we're looking at the same thing here, pretty much. Um, what you can see is, um, I guess you can see this best in figure A that uh, the red circle, which kind of represents that real light gray area, um, that's that's pretty much the entire square, that's all the monolayer graphene that was produced. Um, the blue circle, that represents a bilayer graphene that was produced, the, and the uh, green arrow, the small little bit, is um, trilayer. So just looking at the images, you can see that there's a very... Um, minuscule amount of multilayer graphene being produced. It's just kind of um, specs. Um, and you can see it kind of broken down into the uh, table below. Um, greater than 95% uh, of the entire film was uh, the monolayer graphene that they were looking for. And it was actually less than 1% that was actually trilayer or um, uh, more layers than trilayer. So what the Lee group wanted to do next, um, in order to study the uniformity of graphene, they wanted to take a look at the uh, using Raman spectroscopy, um, essentially to study the surface properties of the graphene, just to make sure that it was um, uh, the monolayer graphene that they observed is actually um, monolayer. Um, so essentially what uh, Raman spectroscopy is, uh, they use some kind of light source, like a laser, and they shine it on the uh, the surface of the material. So, um, and the uh, the instrument it can measure the um, difference in the properties of the light um, before it hits a sample and after it hits a sample. And uh, the after the light getting hit by the sample, um, its energy and vibrational energy, rotational energy, kind of lowers a little bit. So, and the instrument it can actually measure uh, the difference between uh, between the two uh, light samples, if you will, and it can kind of tell a lot of information about um, the material that the light's being shined on. 
um, the, the shift between the, the two peaks can tell a lot of information about the, the material. So uh, taking a look at uh, figure C, which is the, uh, the Raman specter of the sample, um, specifically we can take a look at the, uh, the G peak and the 2D peak. Um, and specifically just looking at the, um, the monolayer band, which is the, uh, the red band labeled uh, 1L. Um, we can see, observe the following um, measurements. Um, the G to 2 peak intensity ratio, so um, the intensity of the G peak um, is about half the intensity of the 2D peak, about 0.5 uh, ratio. Uh, the symmetric 2D band, uh, it's centered at 2,680 wave numbers, and the full width half max is uh, 33 inverse centimeters. So really what this data says is that uh, graphene that's produced um, by this chemical vapor deposition process, uh, the Raman spectra of this sample really corresponds to a Raman spectra um, taken of other samples of graphene, of monolayer graphene that are produced. They kind of, the numbers match up, so um, it's a very good indicator that the graphene being produced is actually um, monolayer. So next, um, the Lee group, they had to uh, measure the electronic quality of the graphene that they produced with the CVD. Um, they just had to make sure that it was at least headed, you know, in the right direction, that it was on par with the um, graphene that was already being produced using the exfoliation method, um, just to make sure that this was a viable um, way to synthesize graphene films and that the electronic quality wouldn't suffer as you uh, made larger and larger films. Um, so they use these things called uh, dual gated field effect transistors or FETs. Um, they used aluminum oxide as a gate dielectric and they measured, uh, they used all their measurements at room temperature. Um, essentially a little bit about uh, these FETs. Uh, they have an electric field. It controls the electrical behavior of the device. The, uh, the electric field, it's generated by voltage difference between the body and gate of the FET. And uh, this electric field that's generated um, by the transistor, um, it controls the conductivity between the drain and source terminals of the transistor, which can be measured, and it gives you a... Um, uh, a lot of uh, information about the electronic quality of the uh, material that's being studied. So uh, what they found is that um, uh, that in its preliminary testing, um, the, the graphene that was produced by the uh, CVD um, not quite matches the quality of the graphene that uh, is produced using the exfoliation method. Um, about, I don't know, about like a thousand times um, lower carrier mobility. So um, essentially the carrier mobility, uh, graphene being produced by the exfoliated method, the electrons travel a whole lot faster than the uh, electrons that travel um, in the, the CVD produced graphene. Um, they also found for the CVD graphene uh, that the residual carrier concentration at the direct point was uh, 3.2 times 10 to the 11th uh, uh, inverse centimeter squared. Um, didn't really have data for the exfoliated graphene for this one, but um, they just the, essentially what uh, those two um, those two properties. What they say is that the um, that the they can continue their um, their research in order to optimize uh, the properties of graphene. Um, essentially, they can make um, alterations to their experiment that would be able to get the CVD produced graphene up to the level of exfoliated graphene. If you guys have any questions about um, about uh, the 
the CVD process, um, about graphing in general, uh, its properties, um, applications, stuff like that. Uh, feel free, throw them down in the comments below. I'll try to uh, get back to you as soon as possible about them. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good one. Uh, bye.